to go ahead and start the recording and welcome everybody. Today we are on chapter one, section four, the escape from darkness. So let me share my screen with all of you and read from this section. Okay, A Course in Miracles, chapter one, section four, the escape from darkness. The escape from darkness involves two stages. First, the recognition that darkness cannot hide. This step usually entails fear. Second, the recognition that there is nothing you want to hide, even if you could. This step brings escape from fear. When you have become willing to hide nothing, you will not only be willing to enter into communion, but will also understand peace and joy. Holiness can never be really hidden in darkness, but you can deceive yourself about it. This deception makes you fearful because you realize in your heart it is a deception and you exert enormous efforts to establish its reality. The miracle sets reality where it belongs. Reality belongs only to spirit and the miracle acknowledges only truth. It thus dispels illusions about yourself and puts you in communion with yourself and God. The miracle joins in the at one mint by placing the mind in the service of the Holy Spirit. This establishes the proper function of the mind and corrects its errors, which are merely lacks of love. Your mind can be possessed by illusions, but spirit is eternally free. If a mind perceives without love, it perceives an empty shell and is unaware of the spirit within. But the at one mint restores spirit to its proper place. The mind that serves spirit is invulnerable. Darkness is lack of light, as sin is lack of love. It has no unique properties of its own. It is an example of the scarcity belief from which only error can proceed. Truth is always abundant. Those who perceive and acknowledge that they have everything have no needs of any kind. The purpose of the at one mint is to restore everything to you or rather to restore it to your awareness. You were given everything when you were created just as everyone was. The emptiness engendered by fear must be replaced by forgiveness. That is what the Bible means by there is no death and why I could demonstrate that death does not exist. I came to fulfill the law by reinterpreting it. The law itself, if properly understood, offers only protection. It is those who have not yet changed their minds who brought the hellfire concept into it. I assure you that I will witness for anyone who lets me and to whatever extent he permits it. Your witnessing demonstrates your belief and thus strengthens it. Those who witness for me are expressing through their miracles that they have abandoned the belief in deprivation in favor of the abundance they have learned belongs to them. Oh, wow. I love this. This brought up so many things for me. Um, you know, just, just knowing that everything has always been there for us all the time. And it's just our awareness of it that, that we need to reestablish. And just so you know, Terry, this is written, it's channeled material from Jesus. And it talks about that in the beginning of this book that this book um, is really Jesus channeling the information through two professors at Columbia University in their, um, in their, can't think of the word, um, in the Department of Mental Health. And they, they were determined to find another way because they weren't getting along and they couldn't figure out with all of their academic accolades why they couldn't figure out how to communicate in a peaceful loving way 
And the director, William Thetford said, there's gotta be a better way. And so another person in the group, Helen Shuckman, who describes herself as an atheist um, said, okay, I, I agree to help you find this other way. And then she started receiving this channeled material and she was a little confused by it, wrote it all down, came and brought it to the professor's bill his, to his office. And he said, I'm not sure what this is, but keep writing it down and let's see where it goes. And here it, it was the Course in Miracles. So kind of an interesting beginning for, you know, in an academic setting like Columbia University, right? It was their, their psychology department. And uh, you wouldn't normally think that you'd get this kind of level of spirituality coming through a psychology department, which makes it even more interesting um, that this is what came through her. And albeit an atheist, you know, self, self-described atheist is talking about being Jesus, right? Which makes no sense at all, but in some way makes perfect sense because you can kind of relinquish your judgment about there being any ulterior motive to the information that's coming through. So does anybody have any comments about this that they'd like to share? Anything coming up for them? I have something, a question. I, I didn't quite understand um, that forgiveness is the opposite of emptiness. I never really thought of it that way. Yeah. That by forgiving, you will not be empty anymore because it seemed that doesn't really seem to resonate with me. Okay. So a lot of what A Course in Miracles talks about is that forgiveness is the key to, um, to letting go of harboring any kinds of a grievance, right? And whenever you're in a place of holding grievances, um, not only are you holding grievances against another person, but you're keeping yourself the jailer of watching over this other person. So in, in being able to forgive, you're offering yourself the freedom to let go of any alignment with fear. So anything that would represent fear, which would be a sense of lack of deprivation of empty, emptiness would all be those fear-based emotions. So when you're, when you forgive and you offer that you're, you align with love. So all of our thoughts stem from either love or fear and all of our fear-based thoughts come in the form of uh, anger, resentment, um, jealousy, you know, all of those sense of deprivation, lack, scarcity, where all of our love-based thoughts are um, joy, complete, uh, abundance, um, uh, any, any emotion that would raise your energetic vibration would be an emotion from love. So I think that's kind of what they're speaking to is what anybody else like to add to that. You, if you break the word down, there's two words, right? For and giving. So you're giving it forward. What I you, like that. And if what you're giving forward, I believe, is love. And you can't give anything if you're in a place of lack. So that kind of even makes more sense, right? You have to be in a place to give something so that it would be the opposite of lack. Is that what, does that answer your question, Terry? Oh, you need to unmute yourself again. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I, I guess it does. I think I have to sort of sit with it for a while because I, you know, I understand, I understand, I, I guess the word emptiness didn't, and forgiveness, those two words is specifically didn't really, because, <clears throat> I don't really, the only, I guess maybe this is, you know, the only person I have trouble forgiving ever is myself. And I guess that is what makes me feel empty. So I guess I sort of answered my question because um, I guess until I can get past that, I won't be fulfilled. 
Yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, yeah. That makes perfect sense. Funny because mm -hmm. emptiness is uh, is the goal of most Buddhists, and a lot of people see emptiness as being a negative thing. Where emptiness is is a is a very positive thing in some in some aspects. I think maybe it goes back to that words are symbols of symbols where, you know, emptiness, maybe the type of emptiness the Buddhists are describing are being at that place of complete at one minute where you're really full, but you're empty because you're not full of your ego self. You're empty of your ego self, but full of that sense of at oneness with all that is. Does is that am I and I don't want to put words into your mouth, Carl, because I haven't studied as much Buddhism as, as you have. You got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Good, good. Any and other for, thoughts before we continue? And forgiveness does begin with the self, because how can you forgive somebody else if you haven't forgiven yourself? Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> Yeah, I find too, too that oftentimes, because it says we can't do it without our brother, right? There's sometimes that mirror is looking at us in our brothers, showing us where we haven't forgiven ourselves, where we see that, you know, something wrong in our brothers, we're judging our brothers. It's kind of that reflection of ourself. And it, it's kind of interesting. So that as our brother allows us to see that in ourselves and we forgive ourselves, it kind of happens simultaneously. The forgiveness. I have a, um, Terry, do you have a copy of the Course in Miracles book? Yep. Which one? Oh, ter cousin Terry, not you, Terry. Oh, oh, <laughs> cousin Terry. Oh, you're on mute again, Terry. We need you, there you, we need, there you go. You Sorry, I'm so used to sitting in on these without participating, I forget to do that. <laughs> Join um, in. You don't have a I, copy yet. Not yet, no. Oh, okay, okay. well, go ahead. Mary. I was gonna say in the last couple of paragraphs of the preface, which we just recently read not that long ago, it talks about forgiveness and the last thing, the last paragraph of the preface. Oh, are you going to put it on the screen? I, I can. Yeah, let me do that. It's on X123, 111. Um, Is it? Uh, yeah. Preface. Yeah, it's, bef it's, yeah, it's before what the it uh, contents. Uh, the last, yeah, from the last paragraph of what it says. Okay, this one right here, forgiveness. There we go, forgiveness. You wanna read it, Marilyn? How about you, Terry? Okay, fine. Forgiveness is the means by which we will remember. Through forgiveness, the thinking of the world is reversed. The forgiven world becomes the gate of heaven because by its mercy, we can, all, we can at last forgive ourselves. Holding no one prisoner to guilt, we become free. Acknowledging Christ in all our brothers, we recognize his presence in ourselves. Forgetting all our misperceptions and with nothing from the past to hold us back, we can remember God. Beyond this, learning cannot go. When we are ready, God himself will take the final step in our return to him. Oh, that was beautiful. You're so good at finding stuff like that, Marilyn. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. I love this Course in Miracles book. I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see if I can get back to it. Do you have any other questions that anybody else want to comment or should we continue? All right, I'll continue on. So let me see where we left off, yeah? Actually, another one of the things I was remembering the Course says somewhere is um, there's nothing to forgive. Right. But that's, that's later on, Cousin Terry. <laughs> okay. Cousin Terry, I love it. It's so good. 
okay. That happens for giving yourself. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> okay. Wholeness and spirit. Let's continue on. The miracle is much like the body in that both are learning aids for facilitating a state in which they become unnecessary. When spirit's original state of direct communication is reached, neither the body nor the miracle serves any purpose. While you believe you are in a body, however, you can choose between loveless and miraculous channels of expression. You can make an empty shell, but you cannot express nothing at all. You can wait, delay, paralyze yourself, or reduce your creativity almost to nothing, but you cannot abolish it. You can destroy your medium of communication, but not your potential. You did not create yourself. The basic decision of the miracle-minded is not to wait on time any longer than is necessary. Time can waste as well as be wasted. The miracle worker therefore accepts the time control factor gladly. He recognizes that every collapse of time brings everyone closer to the ultimate release from time in which the son and the father are one. Equality does not imply inequality, I'm sorry, equality does not imply equality now. When everyone recognizes that he has everything, individual contributions to the sonship will no longer be necessary. When the at one mint has been completed, all talents will be shared by all the sons of God. God is not partial. All his children have his total love and all his gifts are freely given to everyone alike. Except ye become as little children means that unless you fully recognize your complete dependence on God, you cannot know the real power of the son in his true relationship with the father. The specialness of God's sons does not stem from exclusion, but from inclusion. All my brothers are special. If they believe they are deprived of anything, their perception becomes distorted. When this occurs, the whole family of God or the sonship is impaired in its relationships. Ultimately, Every member of the family of God must return. The miracle calls him to return because it blesses and honors him, even though he may be absent in spirit. God is not mocked, is not a warning, but a reassurance. God would be mocked if any of his creations lacked holiness. The creation is whole and the mark of wholeness is holiness. Miracles are affirmations of sonship, which is a state of completion and abundance. Whatever is true is eternal and cannot change or be changed. Spirit is therefore unalterable because it is already perfect, but the mind can elect what it chooses to serve. The only limit put on its choice is that it cannot serve two masters. If it elects to do so, the mind can become the medium by which spirit creates along the line of its own creation. If it does not freely elect to do so, it retains its creative potential, but places, its un places itself under tyrannous rather than authoritative control. As a result, it imprisons because such are the dictates of tyrants. To change your mind means to place it at the disposal of true authority. The miracle is a sign that the mind has chosen to be led by me in Christ's service. The abundance of Christ is the natural result of choosing to follow him. All shallow roots must be uprooted because they are not deep enough to sustain you. 
the illusion that shallow roots can be deepened and thus made to hold is one of the distortions on which the reverse of the golden rule rests. As these false underpinnings are given up, the equilibrium is temporarily experienced as unstable. However, nothing is less stable than an upside down orientation, nor can anything that holds it upside down be conducive to increased stability. Well, there was a lot in that. Um, and a lot came out for me, but would anybody else like to share? For me, I had a really interesting dream last night and I've been talking and teaching and um, including empathy in a lot of my programs that I'm creating, my online programs right now, because I've recently within the last couple of years realize how important empathy is in forgiving because it's hard I think sometimes to forgive when you can't feel that empathy and be able to accept maybe even an apology right and feel and feel that change of energy um, within you and so last night I had this really cool dream because it's all about for me, my mother and my daughter, right? This, this balance of forgiving my mother and then forgiving my daughter and, and understanding that actually my daughter needs an apology from me, which was so hard for me to understand because I thought, oh my gosh, I'm doing all this stuff for her. I've given her everything. I've given her so much more than I've ever had. And I just was perceiving her as entitled and spoiled and unappreciative and all of those things. And it wasn't until I could empathize with my mother's inability to be the mother that I always wanted and really be able to forgive her, not just in, not just in a, you know, well, I can see how her life wasn't as good as mine. I could see how her upbringing was horrific. I could see how she did the best she could with what she had. I mean, intellectually, I could, I could understand that, right? But what I didn't have when she was living, or even right after she passed, I didn't have that feeling of empathy for her until I did this really interesting past life regression with my daughter, which I thought was going to show some really cool places where we had lived in lives before. Um, and I was just doing it for purely entertainment purposes, right? Because I was like, my life's all about right here, right now, Course of Miracles, doing the work. And I was so surprised when I went into a room and my mother was sobbing, like uncontrollably sobbing. And it touched me in a way I'd never been touched before with empathy for my mother and, and feeling her pain at that moment through those sobs and she just kept saying I'm so sorry I'm so sorry like over and over and it's all that's all she said is I'm so sorry but then I started like the waterwork started and I'm not a, a I don't cry easily I mean I've been through a lot of stuff in my life and I I've always kind of been one of those to push through it but when I felt her pain in that moment and I was able to embody what she was feeling, I truly was able to forgive her in that moment. And it was so healing, not only for my relationship with my mother, but also my relationship with my daughter. And where I'm going with this is this dream I had last night. Now, this happened several years ago. I had a dream last night that we did that same exercise. I was forgiving my mother through empathy and then forgiving my daughter and then apologizing to my daughter for not being the mother she expected me to be. And in that moment, when I was looking at my mother, I saw myself. And then as I turned and looked at my daughter, I saw myself and I was like, oh my gosh, we're all the same person. There's no mother, there's no daughter, there's only me. All of this is only me. And then it went into all of my relationships with all of the people I've ever known and ever met. And I was like, there's only me in all of these. There's only me in all of these scenarios of forgiveness. And I could see my face in their face. And all of a sudden I could understand the at one minute 
principle and embody it in such a beautiful experience. So I just wanted to share that because there was something that I read in here about wholeness and spirit that just reminded me so much of that moment of at one minute and really feeling that, that there is only one son of God expressing itself in all of us individually with all of our talents, but we all have these talents because it's only us. There is only one of us with all of these gifts and all of these talents. So it was that aha moment that I wanted to share with all of you. Anybody else want to comment or share or should we just continue? Oh, Ernesto, you're on, you're, you're on mute still. There we go. I've been at this for a while and I'm, I'm still can't, you know, <laughs> that, that even though, you know, it, it, referring to what was read about that really there's nothing to forgive, even though that's true, we still have to go through that to be able to get there, to understand. Because once you saw how you were all, we're all one, then there's nothing to forgive. However, you right. still have to go through it to be able to experience that. Sure. Because I, I had a similar encounter with my mom, you know, where I like brought up something that was very painful and she started crying. Anyway, yes, I agree that we have to go through this ritual sometimes to be able to get there. Yeah, yeah. And because it's just us and there's only one, they don't have to be present to have this healing occur. Like my mother had been gone for years when I had this dream. So she wasn't even here. You know, it was just that that dream of separation that was healed in within a dream. Right. Well, I mean, we're, we're dreaming all the time, so. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Shall we continue with the illusion of needs? Okay. <clears throat> the illusion of needs. You who want peace can find it only by complete forgiveness. No learning is acquired by anyone unless he wants to learn it and believes in some way that he needs it. While lack does not exist in the creation of God, it is very apparent in what you have made. It is in fact the essential difference between them. Lack implies that you would be better off in a state somehow different from the one you are in. Until the separation, which is the meaning of the fall, nothing was lacking. There were no needs at all. Needs arise only when you deprive yourself. You act according to the particular order of needs you establish. This in turn depends on your perception of what you are. A sense of separation from God is the only lack you really need correct this sense of separation would never have arisen if you had not distorted your perception of truth and had thus perceived yourself as lacking. The idea of order of needs arose because having made this fundamental error, you, already, you had already fragmented yourself into levels with different needs. As you integrate, you become one and your needs become one accordingly. Unified needs lead to unified action because this produces a lack of conflict. The idea of orders of need, which follows from the original error that one can be separated from God, requires correction at its own level before the error of perceiving levels at all can be corrected. You cannot, have, you cannot behave effectively while you function on different levels. However, while you do, correction must be introduced vertically from the bottom up. This is because you think you live in space where concepts such as up and down are meaningful. Ultimately, space is as meaningless as time. Both are merely beliefs. 
The real purpose of this world is to use it to correct your unbelief. You can never control the effects of fear yourself because you made fear and you believe in what you made. In attitude then, though not in content, you resemble your creator who has perfect faith in his creations because he created them. Belief produces the acceptance of existence. That is why you can believe what no one else thinks is true. It is true for you because it was made by you. All aspects of fear are untrue because they do not exist at the creative level and therefore do not exist at all. To whatever extent you are willing to submit your beliefs to this test, to that extent are your perceptions corrected. In sorting out the false from the true, the miracle proceeds along these lines. Perfect love casts out fear. If fear exists, then there is not perfect love. But only perfect love exists. If there is fear, it produces a state that does not exist. Believe this and you will be free. Only God can establish this solution and his faith is his gift. Okay, welcome Freddie. Good to have you here. Hi, hi Terry and everybody. I've got a bit of confusion on my end um, because you normally start at 5.30 my time, mm. but I think you might have had a time change there for daylight. You did, yes, and I'm hoping they'll abolish that soon. It's so silly, we keep going back and forth. But now, yes, we had to all wake up an hour earlier. Right, okay. Sunday, so, ah! um, <laughs> So from now on, it'll be starting at 4.30 for me instead of 5.30 in the evening. Yes, I should have sent out a reminder email for everyone who's not in the United States, and that was my bad. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that to my attention, because next year we will have to remind everyone that, um, I, yes, well, hopefully, maybe next year it'll be fixed by then and we won't keep mm. going back and forth. <laughs> well, it's great to be here. I'm sorry I was a bit late. No, no, it's wonderful to have you here, and um, we're Thank reading... Chapter one, we just read Wholeness in Spirit. So I was going to invite anyone who had any comments or questions or shared experiences that they would like to talk about. I found where you were reading. Wonderful. Yeah. And I only got the last two or three chapters, that's all. Yes. Or paragraphs, rather. Paragraphs, yeah. 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 I love this thing that they talk about space is not real, right? What was that movie? It was so good. Um, was Kevin Costner in it? I can't remember the name of the movie where they went, he went back in time to change something that had happened. He went into this thing and he had to go to outer space to get into this thing. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It's, it was such a good movie. No. You're like, you're crazy. We don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find It wasn't the Back to the Future, right? No, not Back to the Future. It was more recent than that. Um, are you sure it was Kevin Costner? Oh, maybe it wasn't. Maybe I messed that up. Yeah, uh, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, oh, gosh. Yeah, I, it, it, I know what you're talking about. I can't remember the name. And he went back for his daughter. Mm -hmm. Um. It wasn't Kevin Costner. I think it was Matthew McConaughey or somebody. Oh, else. maybe it was. Maybe that's what it was. But it's saying that ultimately space is as meaningless as time, isn't it? Right. Yes. That, exactly. That must. That I presume that's because there's no space in spirit because there's no form in spirit. I mean, space belongs with time in 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 the world of form, doesn't it? Space. Right. Yeah, and the projection of the world of form, exactly. Hmm. So ultimately space is meaningless because there isn't really any, any, any space. Yes. Because there's no time. Yes. If you're coming at it from the sp purely spiritual aspect. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. 
Thank you, so, Freddie. Yes, thank you for, for that. Hmm. That was that was lovely. I appreciate that. All right. Well, shall we continue then to the illusion of needs? Okay. Um, home and spirit. Oh. Let's see. What did we just read? We just read. Read the illusion. Oh, we read the illusion of it. I was like, wait, where are we? Okay. Distortion of miracle impulses. Okay, distortion of miracle impulses. Okay, your distorted perceptions produce a dense cover over miracle impulses, making it hard for them to reach your own awareness. The confusion of miracle impulses with physical impulses is a major perceptual distortion. Physical impulses are misdirected miracle impulses. All real pleasure comes from doing God's will. This is because not doing it is a denial of self. Denial of self results in illusions, while correction of the error brings release from it. Do not deceive yourself into believing that you can relate in peace to God or to your brothers with anything external. Child of God, you were created to create the good, the beautiful, and the holy. Do not forget this. The love of God, for a little while, must still be expressed through one body to another, because vision is still so dim. You can use your body best to help you enlarge your perception so you can achieve real vision, of which the physical eye is incapable. Learning to do this is the body's only true usefulness. Fantasy is a distorted form of vision. Fantasies of any kind are distortions because they always involve twisting perception into unreality. Actions that stem from distortions are literally the reactions of those who know not what they do. Fantasy is an attempt to control reality according to false needs. Twist reality in any way and you are perceiving destructively. Fantasies are a means of making false associations and attempting to obtain pleasure from them. But although you can perceive false associations, you can never make them real except to yourself. You believe in what you make. If you offer miracles, you will be equally strong in your belief in them. The strength of your conviction will then sustain the belief of the miracle receiver. Fantasies become totally unnecessary as the wholly satisfying nature of reality becomes apparent to both giver and receiver. Reality is lost through usurpation, which produces tyranny. As long as a single slave remains to walk the earth, your release is not complete. Complete restoration of the sonship is the only goal of the miracle-minded. This is a course in mind training. All learning involves attention and study at some level. Some of the latter parts of the course rest too heavily on these earlier sections not to require their careful study. You will also need them for preparation. Without this, you may become much too fearful of what is to come to make constructive use of it. However, as you use, as you study these earlier sections, you'll begin to see some of the implications that will be amplified later on. A solid foundation is necessary because of the confusion between fear and awe to which I have already referred and which is often made. I have said that awe is inappropriate in connection with the sons of God because you should not experience awe in the presence of your equals. However, it was also emphasized that awe is proper in the presence of your creator. I've been careful to clarify my role in the at one mint without either over or understating it. I am also trying to do the same with yours. I have stressed that awe is not an appropriate reaction to me because of our inherent 
er our inherent equality. Some of the later steps in this course, however, involve a more direct approach to God himself. It would be unwise to start on these steps without careful preparation, for awe will be confused with fear, and the experience will be more traumatic than beautific. Healing is of God in the end. The means are being carefully explained to you. Revelation may occasionally reveal the end to you, but to reach it, the means are needed. And before we discuss, I want to welcome everyone to the room who has joined. And I also want to apologize for not sending out an email, letting all of you that are not in the United States know that we went through daylight savings time on Sunday. So I apologize. I know you're, you're joining late for us, but right on time for you. And, um, and I apologize that I wasn't thinking that I would need to send that out. So welcome, Angelina. Good to see you here. Um, great to have you guys here. We just... I, sorry, yeah. I mean, actually, I remember, the, I remember that yesterday in a meeting I went to, but today <laughs> totally, totally forgot about it. <laughs> I know. And I should have sent it out in an email. So I apologize for that, too. Um, oh, really? We just finished reading chapter one, um, section seven, I think. Yeah, section seven. Uh, oh gosh, yeah, we just finished chapter one, I think. So cool. So does anybody have any shares around this? Yeah, I I do. I um when I. What it says to me is when I think of it in duality, I think of awe as being almost a state of judgment or a state of lack. And so I'm either in awe of what someone else has that I don't, or, it, you know, somehow judging it to be so much better than I can ever achieve. Um, but when I'm in just not in that state of duality, when I'm in the state of being, then my awe is gratitude or appreciation, if you will, for the individuations for that, that light that's within each of us. My awe is for the creation, the magnificence of it. And so it takes on a different meaning. Yeah, that's a great, a great um, share. Thank you so much, Mary, for that. Did you want to share something, Cousin Terry? Or are you, I thought I saw you light up for a minute. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree with you on that, Mary, too. And, and it's interesting, too, because there's so many times we want to be in awe, like, of Jesus, right? I mean, not me so much, because I wasn't raised in any type of um, religious training. So Jesus to me is like me. I mean, the only difference is Jesus was able to be complete love in nothing else. And to me, I just, I have so much gratitude for knowing that that is not only possible, but that is my, my inherent, you know, gift as a creator, as a son of God, that I am like Jesus in every single way. And it's so, um, I just have so much gratitude in knowing that. And I think also having gratitude also gives you the ability of accepting the tools and the, the power to be like, like that, to, to be able to, um, accept that Christ mind for yourself, to, to be able to see all of your brothers as you, to know that not only is that possible, but it's natural. It's natural for us to be in that state of at one mint. Um, and this state of separation and fear is in many ways, I think, you know, just a, an, an unnatural state of being, which is why we are experiencing these, you know, feelings of anger and pain and, <laughs> and judgment and you know it's all like a nudge a nudge to get us <sighs> over to Jesus is in that place of you know love and rare love. Uh, form today terry could you mute yourself 
for a minute. There we go. Thank you. And I'm happy to welcome you to speak anytime you want, but I don't think that was intentional. And if it was, I apologize. If you did mean to be um, speaking, please unmute yourself. <laughs> and, I, and I apologize for saying that if you didn't want to speak. Anybody else want to share on that? I had to look up the word uh, beatific. Am I saying it right? Beatific? Yes. And uh, I was happy to, to see what the definition was. It says, uh, in holy bliss. Ooh. Wow. Huh? That's beautiful. I love that. Right, right. right. So what it says, instead of well, the whole sentence, it says uh, it would be unwise to start on these steps without careful preparation or awe will be confused with fear and the experience will be more traumatic than beatific. Hmm. Oh, if you have had that experience yet of feeling like that, of being like in holy bliss. You're wondering if, are you asking me? Well, I'm just, this is a rhetorical question. Oh, okay. For anyone that, that have, have they experienced that, you know, and because that is something that once you experience it, you, you won't forget it because I guess that's where we are when we're very young still and not worrying about bills and all of that, you know, what, what we have to do in life. We're in that bliss. You see the children playing, they may argue or whatever, or experience jealousy or whatever, and they go right back to that state. And then somewhere along the line, you know, yeah. we differently as we learn language, actually, or at least that's what Don Miguel explains it so, so well. But yeah. experiencing that feeling of holy bliss, that, that can be infectious and always wanting to seek it. And I think what the course is about trying to go back to that state where we can feel the love for everyone in that state. In that state, you, you, just, you just know that there is this love, overwhelming, overwhelming love everywhere, whether it's coming from a tree, a rock, if you're out in the woods, in the countryside. But, we, but how do I explain this? Coming back to coming back to the world, kind of sometimes takes that away. Not takes it away, but but I know I I lose it. I don't I don't feel that same that same blissful feeling of love. But that's a great word. That's it for me. I love that share, Ernesto, and and you know I think that's why the lessons are so powerful and important because the lessons are meant to be used when you say coming back to the world, right? When you come back to your daily grind of having to do the things you do, that's why the lessons can be so empowering and so life-changing because you bring those into that place where it's hard for you to feel that state of bliss. Like, yeah, you're right. It's, it's easy to feel that way if you're meditating on a mountaintop or if you're walking on the beach, which I love to do and just feel that place of at one minute with everything or doing yoga, overlooking my beautiful preserve. But when you're in it, right, the grind, the kids, the job, the money, the, you know, the career, all of that stuff, um, that's where the lessons are so powerful in inducing the experience experience where you can have those moments of ah okay now I get it now I now I see how I can look at how I can choose to see this differently right the ultimate goal is to have that grind be part mm -hmm. of your experience is to live that uh your mantra within the the job or the grind and make that part of uh the where you feel just as you feel better coming out of your job than you do when you went in and uh, keeping your center. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, Carl. Yes, I agree also. Yes. I also get to the point where I'm like welcoming 
the challenge from my brother so I can see what else do I have to heal inside of myself? You know, show me where I'm not loving myself enough. Show me where I'm not forgiving myself enough. And then, boop, there it comes. And you're like, oh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Not usually too hard to find. No, no. <laughs> when you ask, it is given. It goes back to be careful what you wish for, right? Even if you don't ask, it's given. <laughs> yeah. Those are the gifts that you don't always want, though, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. But they're the gifts that you always need, right? It's yeah. Without those experiences, like Ernesto was talking about earlier, you know, without going through those experiences, it's hard to really get to that place of love and at one minute, you know, and that's, that's why the whole opportunity exists within our brother and, and mm. those opportunities sure can be interesting. So shall we go on and read chapter two, the separation and the at one minute? Yeah. I was, Terry, I, I'm sorry. I, I, know. I was just going to say it's kind of like what we were just talking about. It's kind of like refining ourselves, you know, refining that sense of connectedness and interconnectedness where we do feel that uh, we're not in lack, that we have everything. <clears throat> exactly. And I know every time I go through this A Course in Miracles book and the lessons, I feel like I'm sifting out, you know, through the sand, I'm getting clearer and clearer and clearer, like I'm polishing the lens a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And it, it, to that point, like, just when you think, you know, the world shows <laughs> you, you don't know. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. yeah. There seems like there's just always so much more. It just keeps expanding. And I think our mm -hmm. consciousness just, that's the evolutionary growth, right? Of our consciousness to expand and to, to open to more and more and more. <clears throat> okay, so let's go on to chapter two, the separation and the at one minute. And I know that this word is pronounced atonement, but I say at one minute because to me it makes more sense um, for the word being words are symbols of symbols. And this is a, an easier symbol for me to identify with. Okay, to extend is a fundamental aspect of God, which he gave to his son. In the creation, God extended himself to his creations and imbued them with the same loving will to create. You have not only been fully created, but have also been created perfect. There is no emptiness in you. Because of your likeness to your creator, you are creative. No child of God can lose this ability because it is inherent in what he is, but he can use it inappropriately by projecting it. The inappropriate use of extension or projection occurs when you believe that some emptiness or lack exists in you and that you can fill it with your own ideas instead of truth. This process involves the following steps. First, you believe that what God created can be changed by your own mind. Second, you believe that what is perfect can be rendered imperfect or lacking. Third, you believe that you can distort the creations of God, including yourself. Fourth, you believe that you can create yourself and that the direction of your own creation is up to you. These related distortions represent a picture of what actually occurred in the separation or the detour into fear. None of this existed before the separation, nor does it actually exist now. Everything God created is like him. Extension as undertaken by God is similar to the inner radiance that the children of the father inherit from him. Its real source is e internal. This is as true of the son as of the father. In this sense, the creation includes both the creation of the son by God 
and the son's creations when his mind is healed. This requires God's endowment of the son with free will because all loving creation is freely given in one continuous line in which all aspects are of the same order. The Garden of Eden or the pre-separation condition was a state of mind in which nothing was needed. When Adam listened to the lies of the serpent, all he heard was untruth. You do not have to continue to believe what is not true unless you choose to do so. All that can literally disappear in the twinkling of an eye because it is merely a misperception. What is seen in dreams seems to be very real. Yet, yet the Bible says that a deep sleep fell upon Adam and nowhere is there a reference to his waking up. The world has not yet experienced any comprehensive reawakening or rebirth. Such a rebirth is impossible as long as you continue to project or miscreate. It still remains within you, however, to extend as God extended his spirit to you. In reality, this is your only choice because your free will was given you for your joy in creating the perfect. All fear is ultimately reducible to the basic misperception that you have the ability to usurp the power of God. Of course, you neither can nor have been able to do this. Here is the real basis for your escape from fear. The escape is, mere, is brought about by your acceptance of the at one mint, which enables you to realize that your errors never really occurred. Only after the deep sleep fell upon Adam could he experience nightmares. If a light is suddenly turned on while someone is dreaming a fearful dream, he may initially interpret the light itself as part of his dream and be afraid of it. However, when he awakens, the light is correctly perceived as the release from the dream, which is then no longer accorded reality. This release does not depend on illusions. The knowledge that illuminates not only sets you free, but also shows you clearly that you are free. Whatever lies you may believe are of no concern to the miracle, which can heal any of them with equal ease. It makes no distinctions among misperceptions. Its sole concern is to distinguish between truth on the one hand and error on the other. Some miracles may seem to be of greater magnitude than others. But remember, the first principle in this course, there is no order of difficulty in miracles. In reality, you are perfectly unaffected by all expressions of lack of love. These can be from yourself and others, from yourself to others, or from others to you. Peace is an attribute in you. You cannot find it outside. Illness is some form of external searching. Health is inner peace. It enables you to remain unshaken by lack of love from without and capable through your acceptance of miracles of correcting the conditions proceeding from the lack of love in others. Okay. <clears throat> there was a lot in that one. What really stood out for me is that sometimes when we can, as we study this and stay grounded in a belief of, of our true self, um, it's easier to experience a sense of, of uh, when, you're, when you're challenged by uh, experience outside yourself and fall into the perception of of being in the ego rather than the higher self. And it really is really the twinkling of the eye. It's in the twinkling of the eye that switch shifts that perception. And as we experience that state of being and being in the higher self, we can recognize, aha, I'm, I'm not there. And 
I, I am there. It's there. It's there for me. I just have to wake up to it. You know, so I like that idea. I often say flip the switch, but it's really the twinkling of the eye to change the perception and the vision and the experience. So I like that statement. Uh, sentence four in paragraph three. Yes, I love that. And um, I want to welcome Rachel to our room today from Scotland. And I, I apologize to you, Rachel, and to Freddie and to Angelina. We experienced daylight savings time this past weekend. And I should have sent an email out to you guys. So we started an hour earlier today. And, um, and we will continue that <laughs> moving forward. That it'll be an hour earlier for for you guys than um, than what it has been, and I should have realized that not being in the United States, you wouldn't necessarily have gotten that memo. <laughs> so, uh, welcome to um, to our Course in Miracles group. We are actually just ending here, so again, you'll get the replay. And I'm sorry to have missed all of your beautiful inputs and time spent with you guys because I really love what you bring to this group and the energy from, from all of you is wonderful. So, um, so if you would like to have any closing comments, I know you just joined, feel free to unmute yourself, Rachel. <clears throat> and Angelina also, I know you're, you're joining from Spain and Freddie from the UK and great to have all of you guys here today. We just finished reading the first section of chapter two, the origins of separation. So next week, actually, I'm glad I have you all on here because next week I will be in Los Angeles. So I think we're going to have to take a two week hiatus, which I will send out in an email and it'll give everybody a chance to catch up. Yay. <laughs> um, I am helping my daughter move into her house out in Los Angeles. So I'm going to be out there for um, probably two weeks. And uh, so we'll be missing two sessions of A Course in Miracles. And I'm really gonna be missing you guys because I love this. And um, please come back and, uh, and join me. But I will send it all out in an email so that you can, um, you'll be kept up to when we're gonna be starting again on Monday. Um, but having said that, it's a great time to catch up on the lessons, um, start doing the lessons every single day and use them as we, you know, we're talking about today, how important they are in this experience that we're having and, and seeing how the experience actually plays out in what we're doing every day. So I think that's really important. Would anybody like to add any closing words before we um, say goodbye for two weeks? Have a good two weeks. Oh, thanks, Freddie. Look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Yes, me too. Me too. And um, and again, sorry for not giving sending out that uh, memo so you guys could have joined earlier. Yeah, you have to. I just want to forgive <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for including me. I'm sorry about that commotion. We had somebody here coming to do work in the house who wasn't scheduled, so I was a little discombobulated but no worries it happens all the time so yeah. <laughs> thank you that was easy huh? I, yeah yay have a great two weeks and i'll talk to you terry yes thank you terry i appreciate it thanks marilyn thanks everyone for nice day, everyone thank have you. a great time thank you bye guys bye enjoy your time bye. thank you so much <laughs>